One of the best but controversial things that have come out of AI is that it helps academics and students write their dissertations quicker. Now, in today's video, I'm going to be going through how to write your dissertation in one fifth of the time by using AI. But the hack here is that I'm only going to be showing you ways that will not get you plagiarized, ways that will help you check your plagiarism score, and also ways that are ethical which means methods that do not cross the boundary of you getting into trouble. Now, there are four main steps, so let's get straight into it. The first stage is the research stage where you are understanding and finding research papers. The second stage is planning where you're writing your outlines and you're kind of creating that framework. The third stage is the writing stage where you're actually getting things down onto paper. And the fourth stage is the editing where you're checking your citations and making sure the whole thing makes sense academically. So the first step is the research step. And this is where you are taking research papers that you have found and identified and you're trying to understand them. Now, this was the one thing that took hours and hours of time when I was doing my PhD, I used to take weekends, a whole weekend just to read one research paper and still not understand. But using AI, you can very quickly understand research papers with just a click of a button. It can be made so much easier for you to then have to organize it into the right categories and right sections for you to actually begin to write. Now, to be able to do this, I'm going to be using a tool called PaperPal, which I have introduced to you on this channel before, and I have been using it for at least two to three years now, a long, long time. PaperPal is an AI tool that allows you to edit as you write. It has so many academic writing features like language suggestions, plagiarism checks, um, it allows you to research as you write and also add it to your library. There are so many different tools that really allow you to improve your clarity, your tone, and your pre-submission checks. It's an all-in-one lifesaver when it comes to academic writing. So first step, what you're going to do is you're going to open PaperPal and go to Chats PDF. Now, Chat PDF is a really cool new tool that they have introduced onto their platform, which I definitely feel like was missing. But now that it's here, this is going to change the game when it comes to PaperPal and how much you can do with it. So I've uploaded a research paper, as you can see, and this is a research paper that I think is quite hard to read. It's taken me a long time to try to understand it. Um, I've now uploaded it and then I'm going to ask specific questions to uh, chat PDF. Initially, I'd recommend to start with the more general questions like what are the main arguments? Give me a summary. Uh, what are the significance or the implications of the study? What are the strengths? What are the weaknesses? So what would have normally taken you an hour, two hours, a weekend will now take you 30 minutes. It's really easily broken down for you. It's really uh, clear what the main kind of claims are that were made in this paper. And it also links to where that is mentioned. So the green boxes with the numbers that will take you to where that particular point is mentioned uh, within uh, the research paper, so that's really helpful. Um, I've also asked for more specific information, like can you give me the difference between those two different proteins, because they're quite similar. Again, it's always backed up by showing me where that has been mentioned or referenced from in the paper itself. So that's really helpful to be able to go and understand it yourself. And as you can see, there are 21 more questions that they have suggested that you can use. But of course, you can ask any question that you want. These are just some good examples and starting points in case you don't have something to begin with. Then another thing that you can do here is on the top, you can go to summary and that gives you just a very brief overview of the research paper or of the document that you have presented it. A digestible way of understanding the paper. So you can see that in the second sentence it says, uh, the paper begins by introducing this. It explains that it's, it's a bit like I'm speaking to someone who understands it. Um, one of the unique insights was despite being this, this is what happens. It just feels like I'm speaking to someone who, like a postdoc, in, in the lab or someone who has a lot more experience than me. Um, and the last one I think is really cool is this related papers tab. So you can go up there and you can click up there and it gives you other papers that are related to the paper that you have uploaded. Uh, so these are all papers that have similar authors, come from similar journals. Um, the titles are also very, very similar in terms of what the contents are. Um, and you can actually add them to your library and save them to read at a later point. So this is the first stage. It's just the research discovery stage and understanding. Now we're going to move on to stage two. Stage two is the planning stage. And this is where you want to create a logical and structured framework for your essay. 
With this, you want to open a new web document so you can actually begin to write and use the other functions that PaperPal has to offer. Now, straight away, you can, you can either just begin writing with the AI, you can brainstorm ideas, you can create different outlines, um, or you can go to the chat PDF, but we've already done that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to create an outline. And I'm going to go to the essay one because what I want to do is begin writing my literature review, which is essentially a bit of a mini essay. So then I've input here what the topic will be, and that's going to be the structure and function of these two proteins. And then I've set to generate. And what it will do is it will give me a really nice um, kind of outline of what an essay of this topic would look like. This would form the literature review of your main dissertation. You can insert it into your document and begin to use that as a bit of a scaffold and as a bit of a way of brainstorming what different subtopics and chapter titles that you could have um, for your dissertation. I've then gone to the tab on the right hand side called the right tab and here there are certain templates that you can use. So I've said let me try the draft a literature review one which is very very specific and what this does is it asks you to a attach a certain file so it gives you uh, the option to upload the file that's related to your topic and then it will draft a literature review for you so this could be a for example like it says here a draft sample so it could be a sample where you've included like a rough uh, like rough topics um, or like a rough kind of organized structure or outline um, or it could be just like I've done um, a research paper. What we're, we're not doing here is copying and pasting. So all of this is meant to be a guide for you. So this, what I've shown you here on the left-hand side with the structure, is meant to be a guide to, sh to show you what, how do you write an essay, how do you write a review from uh, general to less general. And again, here on the right-hand side, as you can see, it's, it's generating this um, output text. This is uh, an example of how you can summarize uh, this research paper as um, an academic text essentially. So I'm then going to insert it into my text. So this on the left hand side is just a draft. It's not me actually writing. Now as you're continuing to plan and generate this outline and think of ideas, you can go to the research and sites tab and there are some different, there are kind of different questions that prompt you to find some more research papers. So I clicked on the one that said, what are some ideas that I should include in the introduction of this essay. And what it will do is it will give me the answer for this, but it will also back this up by uh, with research papers. Um, so as you can see, there are there's information given to me, but also there's there are research papers that I can add to my library, but I can also cite them at the same time. Um, so this, again, really helpful because it's not just information given to you with no, um, no evidence, it's information given to you with evidence at the same time. It's essentially a research assistant in your pocket. It's giving you background information and backing it up with evidence as well. Step three is writing. And this is where the fun begins because you're bringing, bringing everything together into one place to prepare the first draft of your dissertation. So for this step, you want to begin to write. Now I'm going to go back to the document because I want to start by using the outline that I had before. The first thing it says is to give me an overview of the cell cortex. So that should be the first part of the introduction, which I agree, you should always have something really general as part of your introduction. So I can begin to write. Now there's two ways that I can do this. Obviously I've done lots of reading before. I have my citation library. I have all the information that I've read and collated um, in the recent like days that I have been doing this research. So I can just begin to write based on what I've read. Um, but I can also use the right hand side here where I can do the research and cite tool which allows me to ask questions, get some information, like I mentioned to you in the last section, and then write at the same time. So here I've asked it to give me a brief overview of the cell cortex, also given me the reference as well, so I'm able to at least write, but still know where it's come from, and then I can use that reference to cite afterwards as well. So citing is really easy, and I think this is the hard bit that people tend to struggle with when it comes to writing, and what actually kills a lot of the time is citations. So what you can do is you can very easily insert citations from either anything that's given to you in the research and cite, or anything in the citation library, and it automatically plugs it in the bottom as well as part of your reference list, and you can change the citation style as well very easily to there's hundreds of styles, actually thousands of styles. I've chosen Harvard. And so you just keep on doing that as part of the cycle. You're writing, you're getting information, you're citing, you're writing, you're getting information, you're citing, and it's all part of the cycle. And then step four, and this is where PaperPal is absolutely transformative. What you can do is you can edit 
as you write but, or edit after you write. So let me show you what you can do. Editing is super important because it takes a, an average or a mediocre piece of text and it can transform it into something that is spectacular, especially when it comes to academic writing. So there are language mistakes and consistency mistakes as well. So I can just edit those language mistakes as I go along. And then you have consistency as well. And I noticed this earlier, um, there's, there are mixed up spellings between US and UK spelling. So it made sure that I'm sticking to one specific um, variant. I can then go to the second tab, which is the rewrite tab. I need to highlight a section that I want to rewrite and I want to try to modify. And there are four options, paraphrasing, trimming, making academic or using synonyms. Um, so I'm gonna start off with the paraphrasing one and this one just maintains the meaning, but uh, changes the, the text, the order of the writing a little bit. I can also trim. Uh, this is already quite a short piece of writing, so it will trim it, but probably not by a huge amount, which is good because I don't actually want the meaning to be reduced. I just want it to be a little bit cleaner. Uh, so it has trimmed it by nine words for me. Then I'm going to do some checks. So once I've cleaned everything up, I've got it looking really good. I'm going to do this AI review check, which is actually super, super cool. And I'm so excited about this capability. So I've said that I've written this introduction and can you give me some feedback on the issues with this introduction. So it has pulled out four different, or I think five different areas of how I can improve um, the introduction, just the introduction. Like I could ask about any section, but specifically looking at the introduction. So firstly, there's a lack of clear research gaps and objectives. Then there's other things like it's not very specific, it doesn't contextualize recent studies, um, the phrasing isn't great, and there's also a missing hypothesis. You can really see like how you can check on so many different things, um, the introduction, uh, feedback, check the whole manuscript, um, improve the background, your flow, the structure, you can really get amazing tailored feedback on this. So I, I love this. And then I'm going to do a plagiarism check. And again, this is another game changer. And I can't believe that all of this is all on one platform. It's all on PaperPal. Um, so when you get a subscription for PaperPal and you're, you're using Prime, you can use all of this. And this is all included in that one subscription. And what it does is it checks through the manuscript, through the database online to make sure that there isn't anything that you have copied from by accident. And um, we're looking for accidental plagiarism. I haven't referenced or cited or you know th this can happen very easily so um, we don't want that to happen so what we're going to do is check so you can do that straight away and you can see that there's a five percent overall similarity which is absolutely fine and it points out what the issue is and actually what happened was at the bottom I hadn't done uh, or, or written a citation or for this uh, sentence that I wrote and actually these these came from those two sources, but I haven't referenced them. So it just reminded me to go ahead and reference them. If I were to do that, cite it and quote it, then I would be absolutely fine. 5% is, is completely fine when it comes to similarity. So it gives me confidence in knowing that I can submit this and I won't get in trouble. Um, I wrote it myself. I know that I did. I, wrote, I know that I wrote it myself, so I should be absolutely fine. And this is essentially how you can write a dissertation in a fifth of the time. All of those stages from researching, from understanding papers, from, from doing your outline, from um, writing and editing and citing, and then checking for plagiarism, all of these stages can be can be conducted on PaperPal because every single stage is included within the platform. It's one of the oldest platforms that I have worked with as well. I'll leave a link in my description down below if you want to go ahead and try it out. And there'll be a discount code there as well. With the introduction of uh, chat PDF that allows you to upload a research paper, talk to it, find information out. There are so many different stages at which uh, you would take a lot longer to write and a lot longer to check, but using PaperPal, it just cuts down the time by an immense amount. When I do these videos, every time I do these videos, I just think to myself, I wish I was a PhD student today because it would have made my life so much easier. I would have been able to actually spend time on research and actually spend time doing things that I really enjoyed instead of spending days and weeks trying to understand one research paper. You know, it's... It's, com it's a complete game changer. If you enjoyed this video, then please let me know. Let me know if you try PaperPal. Let me know if you have tried it before. I'm sure lots of you guys use it and you always tell me that you really enjoy it. So I'd love to hear from you and I'd love to hear what more you'd like to see from me. And I hope to see you in my next video. Okay, bye.